we're so excited to have you today and to interview you. You are April Book Selection, um, which was good riddance, and the three of us loved it. Uh, for all of you out there, and for you as well, I'm Ashley, of course, and then this is Catherine, and this is Betsy, and the three of us run the Ashley Brook Book Club together. It's a collective um, joint effort, and yes. so I'm so glad to have these girls with me today to be able to ask you some of these questions that we've come up together. The book club started off as like a pet project, but now it's become a passion project. <laughs> we are so obsessed with it. We are only on, what, month three? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're on month three. We are like planning big things ahead, and you are one of those big things. So getting an author interview was one of, well, like, on our dream board. Our, yeah, our vision board. <laughs> yes, and so <laughs> having you is just like such a treat for us. So thank you so much. And um, what we'll do is we'll ask some fun, like, lightning round questions, and then we have a few more questions about the book and how you write and all things like that. But I'll have the girls ask their favorite questions, but I'll start off. Okay. Well, first of all, can you introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. And then we'll all start off with some questions. Okay, sure. I'm Eleanor Lipman. I um, grew up in Massachusetts. I started writing by going to an adult ed um, adult ed fiction writing course. That's amazing. Um, it's just 10 weeks for $40 at Brandeis University. So um, this Good Riddance is my 12th novel, wow. 13th book if you count a short story collection, an essay collection, and a uh, collection of rhyming political tweets that I did. <laughs> And um, what else? What else counts as an introduction? No, that's <laughs> perfect. You're amazing. I love that $40 started this amazing career path for you. And, you know, the, when the night came for the first lesson, and I had to drive from Newton Highlands to Waltham, and I got cold feet, and I thought, you know, I don't know if I really want to do this. And then I remembered that I paid $40. <laughs> And that was something like 1978, 79, I think. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. I yeah. think you got your $40 worth. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I almost left after the first class because it seemed that other people in the class were more advanced. It was supposed to be a beginner class that just offered exercises. Mm -hmm. And I wrote in a nonfiction way. I worked for um, an um, I worked for the Mass Teachers Association doing their employee newspaper. So I thought, well, even if I can't write fiction, I'm sure I could do the exercises. But after the first class, I thought, um, you know, other people seem to have arrived with short stories and even novels. So this is above my pay grade. So I told the teacher, whose name was Arthur Edelstein, that... Um, Thank you very much, but I didn't think it was for me. And he said, oh, come on. It'll be fun. That's so amazing. Did, did, you, did you stay in touch with him? Does he know? Did. No, he, um, he died a few years ago, but I, he, I absolutely stayed in touch. In my, in my, third, my third novel third novel, which was Isabel's Fed, I, he's thanked, of course, I, I thank him in the acknowledgments all the time, mm -hmm. and that one was particularly said, you know, that he taught me how to write. That's oh, so that's sweet. That's so cool. And such an inspiration to, like, the three of us and to all of our readers and listeners out there, for sure, just to be able to, like, he just took a leap of faith, and that's so great. And, you know, when I tell people, when people tell me they're going to start writing or would like to write, then I usually say find a workshop and find a workshop that has a leader, not just a peer group. Because in a peer group, you can get a loud mouth who <laughs> he or she knows more than anyone else, his name is major, he has a master's degree. And so it's, I, I recommend he was a professor of English at Brandeis but also, you know, a published writer, not just a peer group where you're going to go home and what you're going to retain is the, the meanest comment that anybody <laughs> made. Yeah. That's yeah. such good advice, like, for even not even life writing, in general. just life advice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your introduction. My first question, and it will be my only question because I'll hand it off to these girls, but is, at, first of all, I we loved the plot line of this book, and that's I mean, for a multitude of reasons why we picked it, but 
I we just had never her I just thought it was so clever. And I wanna know, have you ever attended any of your high school reunions? Oh, almost I would say almost all of them. Really? Oh my yeah, gosh, I love hearing that. Sure, sure. I lived in Massachusetts. I went to Lowell High School in Lowell, Massachusetts. And I was either, um, you know, I was either 25 miles away from it or eventually two hours. But I even went to my latest one, which it was such dedication because my nephew got married at 4 p.m. in Massachusetts. And the, and the reunion was at 5 p.m. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. About 40 minutes away, and I maneuvered, got to the reunion late, but um, made it. That's and I felt particularly that it was important because I'd, the previous year, I'd done a reading in Lowell at the Lowell Public Library, and I'd been this wonderful turnout and a lot of friends, and I didn't want people to think, well, they turn out on a cold February night right. and go to my reading at the Lowell Library called Pollard Memorial Library, but I can't make it to the reunion, so right. uh, I went. <laughs> I love that. Fantastic. Well, I'm like, I love that. Okay, so I'll pass it off to Catherine. She has some fun, like, little one-liner questions for you. Okay. And feel free to make it a sentence, a word, whatever. Yes. So just some quick questions. Yeah, quick, fun questions to get to know you better. So what is the favorite, your favorite book you've ever read? Oh, oh, boy. That, you know, I would give credit to Happy All the Time by Laurie Colwin. And Laurie Colwin is someone who wrote also um, – passed away she passed away at 48 um but she wrote a series of books novels and short stories that were very smart very intelligent but very witty and it was happy all the time that made me think i think i would like to sign up for a course and try writing fiction that's amazing that's awesome um coffee or tea oh coffee <laughs> yes, yeah yeah had a cup of tea but coffee Coffee, can't look at it. I love that. It's definitely the right answer. Yeah. What are you reading right now? Oh, um, you know, right now I'm reading, I get sent a lot of books in galley form to, and um, publisher would hope that I would write an endorsement, also known as a blur. So right now I'm reading something called The Liar by, um, too bad I don't have it in front of me so I can tell you the author. Um, it's um, Israeli author set in Jerusalem. It's wonderful, so I'm going to blur it. But I just finished a book I also loved. It's called Savage Feast by Boris Fishman, and it's a memoir about his family moving from Russia to the United States. He was nine years old, and it's also a memoir with recipes. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love food right. memoirs. <laughs> All right, lipstick or chapstick? Both. Not chapstick, not the brand chapstick, but yeah, no. I have lip gloss <laughs> in every room. I love it. <laughs> Same. <Yeah>. Same. <laughs> one. Yes. What is your dream vacation location? Oh, you know, I would say, um, well, this is, a, let me think. My dream, okay. Well, this gets personal. Is that all right? Yes. yes. Um, uh, well, I was widowed almost 10 years ago, and um, uh, seven years, six years ago, I met someone who is now my significant other, and he's originally from Liverpool, England. Oh, wow. and of course, he's been in this country for something like 38 years, but we go back every year to Liverpool, and I'm the one that keeps saying, could we go back to Liverpool? But I also want to go to um, back to Venice, which I thought was one of the most wonderful places ever, Mexico City, and Berlin. Ooh, those are good ones. Good list. Yeah. Yep. And where is your favorite place to read? Bed. Yes. Yeah. Do you not fall asleep? Oh, I fall asleep, so I read, like, a page and a half. <laughs> yes, okay, me too, because that's my that's problem. Big, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Those are great. Okay, Beth, do you All want right. to ask some of the other questions about the book and about how she writes? Yes, I have some more good riddance and writing-focused questions. Okay. Um, I love, first of all, I love reading author acknowledgments, because I feel like 
I get to learn a little bit about the author. And in the acknowledgments, you um, talked about your friend Jonathan, who found the yearbook that was kind of like the inspiration for this story. Um, so how did the book take shape after that event? Like he found the yearbook and then what kind of happened from there? Yes, you know, I I um I just wrote an essay about but the sort of not how I wrote it, but about visiting the town, Key, New Hampshire, where the yearbook that Jonathan found at a flea market had that had come from. Oh, so that was really fun. But um what happened was Jonathan because he's from England, had never had a yearbook, and his high school didn't even have graduations. Imagine that. Oh, wow. I know. Um, so he got this yearbook at this flea market because he thought it was Americana, and then he studied it. He read every little entry and little notes, and it turned out that this actual yearbook from the flea market belonged to the woman to whom it was dedicated. She was a teacher who was sort of obsessed with this class and had gone to yearbooks. So I didn't think, oh, here's my next book. But one day we were just, I was a passenger in the car and I thought of a sentence that I wrote down. It was just uh, something like, I am in possession of a yearbook that belonged to my mother. That isn't the first line of Good readings, but close enough. And then it just, you know, then it, another sentence and then a paragraph. That's how I write. I don't outline. So okay. that's how they all wrote. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that it was just kind of like this, this entity that just kind of stayed with the two of you and kind of kept you thinking and, you know, it yeah. came piece by piece. Yeah. Um, sure. About how long does it take you to write one of your novels? I'm sure they're all different, but... You know, it's not all that different. I Usually I start and I write maybe a page or a, par or a chapter, throw it out, start over again. So once I get to what I consider the real beginning, <laughs> then it's usually 15 to 18 months. Okay. Wow. There's plenty of throwing away. And I've even, for Isabel Spad, I threw away 125 pages. It had just kind of stopped dead. Mm. Wow, that's amazing. That's but also I, like good. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, but I also have a policy, <laughs> I have a private policy, not to regret that, to not see it as a waste of time, but see it as worthwhile. We're getting like so much wisdom from you today <laughs> because I feel like that's another like great nugget just for like life in general to be like, no, nope, that wasn't great. I'm going to do it again. I like that. Yeah. Oh, and I, I keep it, and I consider that sort of the cemetery of, you know, I love possibly it. good love paragraphs. It. Yeah. So I keep it, and then I mine some of those sentences, because some of the passages will apply, and then I think, oh, wait a minute, I think I wrote something about that in document one, <laughs> so, and they, you know, they'll have different names and uh, different months, maybe, <laughs> but... Yeah, so there's only one of my books, The Ladies' Man, that started and progressed from where I, the first sentence I wrote. Wow. And that's, that's either not very, that's, so that's not great, <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> okay. Um, so one of the things we liked the most about Good Riddance was the quirky characters. I mean, they were all so interesting and different and we wanted to know if there was one that you had the most fun writing or liked the most yes i don't usually say this <laughs> <laughs> well what i don't usually say is when people ask you to name a favorite book right. but i found myself he's a minor but i was so fond of daphne's dad Yes. And I'm also, I, I love dogs. I don't own one, but I have a grand dog. Okay. <laughs> but um, from the moment I introduced the father, I was just so fond of him. I love that. And he's very endearing. Okay, mm -hmm. so that, that makes me so happy that you said that because someone left a comment on one of our latest posts about the book and said, my favorite part so far is her relationship with her dad. And I thought that that was so sweet. So I love that you said that. Oh, and I, um, the dog, yeah, I, I think I probably have this, 
secret favorite, you know, that my, my secret profession would be to be a dog walker in New York City. Okay. Um, so I made him a dog walker. I don't think that's too big a reveal because it surprises Daphne. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But I had fun with that. And there's a dog in my building. It's a dog-friendly building whose name is Gizmo. And I named one of the dogs in the book Gizmo because I love the name. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, that's <laughs> Um, and now that Good Riddance is out in the world and has been out for a few months, um, are you working on your next project? Are you taking a break? What are you working on? Well, I am. I, I, I even was working on it this morning. Uh, I'm something like page 58 of the next book. <gasps> Very exciting. It's from the time you finished, I finished Good Riddance to the time it came out. It's a whole year that goes by. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, I feel as if, well, it is. It's my job. So I feel that I can't, you know, just take a whole year off. <laughs> Although that would be nice. You could go, go to Mexico, Mexico City. You could go to all those places you mentioned. Yes. Right. I love that. Okay. Is that well, it? That, that was our last question for you. So do you have any questions for us? I don't know that you would, but <laughs> as we just drilled you. One thing that you've been so receptive to me talking about process, and I feel like I didn't answer about how fond I was of the dad, that um, I think there's something mildly um, instructive about. When I introduced Jeremy, it was because I just felt that it was, this, and that's quite early in the book, it's something, like, I don't know, 25 pages or something, mm -hmm. that I felt that it was needed something else. And I once read this interview with the wonderful novelist Faye Weldon, and she said, if you feel that you're stuck, then it's not your fault, it's the work. Now, that, of course, isn't a great um, um, comfort that it's mm -hmm. the work. But it, she said it probably needs someone else. It needs to introduce, and maybe you need another character. Um, so at that point I said, you know what, Daphne lives in this apartment building in New York, she needs a neighbor. And so I introduced Jeremy. I love oh. that. That's so. so great. I love that Jeremy is on Riverdale too. I yes. just like that's such a specific detail and I love it. And then he's wearing <laughs> braces, like I was just very into the whole thing. I thought that uh -huh. was so funny. Mm -hmm. I, and you know, I have to say, I'm taking up too much of your time here. No, you're not perfect. perfect. And things like that. I describe him and say, you know, he had braces on and he had, you know, a no he wasn't handsome. But what I have found with my various novels, that when it's a sympathetic male character, then very often the reviewers say, handsome Jeremy lived across oh. the hall. And I think, well, that's interesting. Yes. That maybe they just project that nice equals handsome. So that's not a bad thing. No, mm -hmm. kind always is handsome. It's true. <laughs> More life wisdom. Kind <laughs> is handsome. Kind is handsome. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time. We know you're so busy. So this is so, this made our whole month. Our whole, yes. yes. <laughs> it's been a okay, so then next time we're in the city, we have to do coffee. <laughs> oh, I love it. We could do better than coffee. <gasps> okay. We could do cocktails. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. I love that. I love that. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.